but let's stick with the lies, damn lies, the, uh, the Democrats' lies. Uh, former President Barack Obama delivered his final pitch to voters on behalf of Kamala Harris. And, of course, he just had to repeat a number of thoroughly debunked lies, including the fine people on both sides lie. Here is what Barack Obama had to say, and I'm going to follow that with, with a clip of what Trump actually said. Who said that there were very fine people on both sides of a white supremacist rally. Very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. You had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? He could not be clearer. He was very, very clear in saying he was not talking about the white nationalists and the Nazis, and yet that divisive, damaging lie has been repeated over and over again, not just by Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris. And it was only a few days ago Barack Obama was decrying how divided America was, how scared Americans were, and then he pulls that nonsense. So Donald Trump came out there quite literally within days, perhaps even within hours, back in August 2017. I remember it very well. I remember it like it was yesterday. He came out almost instantaneously to condemn what happened in Charlottesville. Rita, here is the key point. One, they are just totally lying, as this clip just showed. I can't believe they're still trying to pull this stunt, by the way, seven years after every so-called purported self-proclaimed fact checker in the country has debunked this for being the the thoroughly, thoroughly just just pile of stewing, feeded garbage lie that it actually is. But but even more to the point, Rita, for over a year now, since October 7, 2023, there has been a Charlottesville on American university campuses and in, in American large urban corridors basically every single day. Do you know who has not condemned any of this and who, if anything, is actually telling the, the so-called pro-Gaza protesters that are actually out there trying to harm Jews and others much more than these stupid little tiki torch Nazis in Charlottesville are? Do you know who is not condemning them? Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Kamala Harris repeatedly telling them, you know what? They have a point there. She's trying to indulge mm -hmm. the worst first excesses of the actual modern neo-Nazis while trying to drum up this stupid clip from seven years ago. Again, no one buys this crap. They are desperate. They are flailing for anything here in the final hours, and they will not get truth, get in the way of a, of a good narrative. Now, today, Joe Rogan, who is a hugely influential podcaster, his audience dwarfs everyone and everything else, he endorsed Trump. And this is a big deal, Josh, because... He's not a traditional conservative figure. He used to back Bernie Sanders quite strongly. Um, but he's been red-pilled like millions of other Americans in recent years. Uh, do you think this is enough to get Trump over the line, the number of male voters who have been red-pilled, who've gone from Democrats to being independents or Republicans? Yeah, so two things here. One, so Joe Rogan does have an absolutely massive audience there. And, and the fact, I think, most interestingly, that that he and Elon Musk, neither of whom is, is a traditional kind of heritage foundation, Washington, D.C., think tank sort of con conservative, not, not someone who's been steeped in the intellectual conservative canon. The fact that these two guys are having this conversation and endorsing Trump, I think, says a lot about what the Trump coalition is and what it is not. Fundamentally, I think what the Trump Vance ticket represents and what the Trump coalition, the MAGA movement represents is fundamentally, Rita, a return to civilizational sanity and ultimately just normalcy. It is a rejection of some, of some vogue, faddish notions that that biological males can compete in women's sports, that we can just let in millions and millions of unvetted illegal aliens, terrorist sympathizers, and we're not going to feel any kind of cultural effect whatsoever. There's not going to be any effect on wages for lower income warners and, and anything like that. It fundamentally is just a common sense coalition. That really is the way that I envision the Trump Vance ticket. Elon Musk is a common sense kind of guy. Joe Rogan is a common sense kind of guy. Again, they're not out there because they have these deep-rooted 
kind of in their bones intellectual thoughts about the capital gains tax run. No, they're out there because at a visceral level, they are patriotic, let's fly the flag, red, white, and blue, patriotic Americans. And they want a president in there who understands that this country is good because it is great and it is great because of its citizens. That fundamentally, I think, at its core is what distinguishes this ticket from the opposition ticket. I do think that the Joe Rogan endorsement makes a big deal. I personally wish it had come a little sooner. But, you know, again, he's not a, he's not a traditional <laughs> endorser, as you said there. So better late than never, certainly. Uh, well, he's got quite a coalition, Trump, here. Very diverse background, broad church of people. When you look at the likes of Tulsi Gabbard and Robert F. Kennedy Jr., Vivek Ramaswamy, Elon Musk, again, Elon Musk, a former Democrat donor. Um, those crucial independent voters, do you see them swimming, swinging overwhelmingly to Trump? Is that what's going to decide this election? So I, I think that Donald Trump is going to win independent voters. I also think, to get back to what you were saying with, with, with the Joe Rogan effect, I think that he's going to absolutely dominate the male vote. So, you know, the media here in America has been talking a lot about the female vote and how Donald Trump has this horrific gender gap. And you have this stupid clip of Mark Cuban circulating, saying that there's no powerful, respectable, intelligent women close to Donald Trump. That would be news to a lot of people. I saw Megyn Kelly having a lot of fun with that particular quip on the campaign trail in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania last night. But, you know, what the media does not talk about is the fact that Kamala Harris and tampon Tim Walls are severely underwater when it comes to the male vote here. In fact, the metrics that I have seen show that Donald That's Trump is crushing with, with, the, with, with the male vote even more so than the than the than the Harris Walls ticket is crushing with the female vote. So if men come out and actually vote for Trump anywhere close to what the polling currently suggests, I think he's headed towards a resounding victory tonight. I really do. Josh Hammer, thank you for your time.